Hello and welcome to this edition of Credit Matters TV. My name is Christian Woody. I head the Corporate Ratings Group for Standard & Poor's here in Europe. I'm with Tobias Mock today. Welcome, Tobias. Good afternoon. Tobias uh, is a Managing Director and heads our Light Industries uh, analytical groups. Uh, some 50 or so analysts uh, spread uh, around Europe. A new publication uh, on the, uh, the consumer sector. We've published a report which uh, includes uh, some commentaries on uh, 30 consumer goods companies uh, in Europe. Uh, and, and I'd like to uh, just explore with Tobias the background to that and some of the trends that we see in the sector that we've, we've covered. So Tobias, um, just give the background to it. Why are we, why are we doing this? Why are we publishing uh, this book? Yeah, we felt there's a need for shedding some light on a significant unrated space uh, within Europe here on a lot of big, very familiar consumer branded names. So you will see a lot of the companies are very familiar to most of us as consumers because we, we buy these products day to day which were not rated. So we thought we can deliver to a lot of market participants useful information in classifying what would be the business risk or financial risk of those institutions. Okay, so we, we've published, um, I guess, a classification on each of these businesses. A ra is it a rating? No, and I think that's a good point. It's not a rating, it is a classification. We have undergone a different process because the difference lies, we just used public available information, so we did not have any direct contact to the companies and so therefore we have not undergone from the information gathering pace the typical way we would do for a rating. In addition we also have from the process not chosen to go the typical committee route we would have internally. We have also done a different process where we had our sector specialists and also our sector input into that product but we did not have all the individual analysts involved. Okay, but, but you've slotted each company into the business and financial risk matrix, so it, it would be easy, I think, for market participants to infer a rating from what we've published? Well, I think it's correct that as we have used our criteria and, you know, our business financial risk credit metrics tries to find clearly that the rating outcome plus minus one notch is a kind of uh, can be deducted from these metrics, I think it's fair to assume you can get a guidance, but I think as we said before, there's one important element, especially on the financial risk profile. Mm -hmm. We have used historical data here, mm -hmm. so we have not done with forecasts what we would do in a normal rating process. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it's also fair to say the financial data involved in that book is from 2010, so it's uh, some months old, okay. and clearly so therefore, I think it's fair to assume in a real rating process there could be also a deviation from this metrics which is more than one notch. Okay, I, I understand. Let, let's try and move on then. Um, 30 companies, how did, you, how did you select the companies? We thought about, we want to have of course meaningful companies in terms of debt issuance. So we chosen companies which had around 200 million euros in debt issued at least. We also looked of course to companies where we felt from the size, from the brand name, uh, they are of course uh, meaningful companies within EMEA. Um, and we had of course look as we dealt with the information only with public information, we had to make sure that these were companies where we have from a public domain enough information to make our exercise. Okay. So that brought us to these 30 companies in the consumer space. Okay, so um, analytically and summarize your, your view of the sector, uh, what conclusions have you drawn about prospects uh, in, in the consumer goods sector from the analysis you've undertaken? Yeah, the interesting outcome was clearly that in that sector, consumer goods, we know the consumer goods sector has some positive elements from a credit side um, and that was also reflected in the outcome. We have seen that quite a sizable amount of companies would be here in the kind of investment grade space. So mm. even about more than 50% of the 30 companies we would expect could come to the investment grade side. That is very different to what we see normally in terms of new business what comes to us, where nearly 80% is speculative grade and only 20% is investment grade. Mm. So why is it the case? Why are there more investment grade companies? Firstly, the business risk profile, which tends to be quite solid for most companies. 
But there's also an interesting observation that we have not found in that industry that this industry is using the highly leveraged categories. So they're not leveraging up like what is the typical situation what we see for many LBO deals. Okay, but but again, just just to just to ensure I understand that, that this isn't a rating. Um, it, you know, it's a desktop analysis based on historic information. So it, it, it's quite a distance from the rating product, which involves a fairly uh, intense interaction with a company's management team. Uh, involving the supply of confidential information and so on, um, it, it is it is quite different. Yes, I think that's that's a very good point to to, to summarise it. You have as well to see there's no surveillance on these companies. While you know on the real rating we would have a surveillance, the dialogue with management is especially important in variables like financial policy. So we could of course just from the public information deal with that type of information. So you're right to assume um, in a full-fledged rating process there could come information towards us which would change some of the elements in the uh, categorization. Okay. Tobias, that's very helpful uh, in welcome. summarizing uh, our, our outlook on, on the consumer goods sector and, and also the rationale for producing the, the, this book. Thank you very much.